Hey what's going on guys, this is Andrew Chicken and welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about one of the most controversial champions in Paladins, Seven. Seven can be an addictingly fun character to play for some, but for the vast majority of players he is quite the nightmare to play against because he's got a series of unbalanced mechanics that just end up making him feel really frustrating to play against even if he's not necessarily the most broken champion in the game. And so I want to talk about what can be done to fix this character and basically what I would do if I had total and complete control over Seven to change whatever the heck I wanted. Now, before we get started, I do want to address, I guess, a fear some people might have because I guess I'm a Paladin's partner or whatever, and I guess that means I have control over this character. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not trying to kill this character. I don't want Seven to be dead. I don't want anyone to be dead except Kasumi. So, this I'm not trying to kill this character in any way. I just want to make him more fair and more fun to play both as and to play against. Primarily to play against, but I do have some suggestions that will hopefully make him play uh, a little bit better as well, like uh, make him more fun to play as. So, let's go ahead and get started by talking about the major problems that this guy has that make him just such a nuisance to play against but also admittedly do make him feel pretty fun to play. The first major nightmare is this, the mobility. I mean, look at this. We just reset everything. We travel at a million miles an hour thanks to the terror card. I'm not even using spring loaded, by the way. If we really want to crank the mobility up, we go spring loaded, grapple build, grab Kronos. Oh my gosh, now we're talking. It's just infinite mobility all over the place, zooming across the map. It is absolutely bonkers. And there are some circumstances where it just feels completely unfair to play against. I mean, sometimes you'll just be sitting there trying to shoot him, and then you just have to sit there and watch as he just flies completely to the other side of the map, and you can't even chase him, your bullets can't even chase him, he's that fast. It's absolutely ridiculous. Now, of course, we do have to keep in mind that hypermobility is Seven's whole personality. It's what sets him out from every single other flank, and every single other character in the game is that he has the absolute best mobility, bar none. And we don't necessarily want to ruin that unique identity that he has, because it is something very unique, and if we were to kill that, we would just assimilate him into the other flanks, and he wouldn't really stand out. He wouldn't really have really that much going for him at all, because at that point, he'd be a guy with a gun, <laughs> 1950 HP. So we don't necessarily want to kill that, although I do have some ideas to make it maybe a bit more fair to fight against, which we'll talk about later. So that brings us to the second major issue with Seven that makes him extremely annoying to play against, and that is his range. Seven's range is a standout among the flank class. It is some of the best range in the flank class, and when you consider the ease of use that he has compared to some of the other long-ranged options, it's arguably the best range in the flank class. So at this range, against this Vic right here, I can still 3-tap. And that is significantly easier to do at that range against a moving target than it is to do with somebody like Maeve or Eevee. And the reason for that is because he's a hit scan. He is actually one of the rare hyper-mobile hit scans in this game. If you look at most of the hyper-mobile characters in this game, they don't have hit scans. They have projectiles. Eevee, for example, is probably the uh, the queen of hypermobility flanks, right? And she has a very slow moving projectile. I mean, at this range alone, you can see how slow it already is. And the slowness of this projectile balances out the range. You can see her effective range is technically longer than Seven's, but look at the travel distance. If I want to snipe that Vic, I have to be insanely lucky or insanely skillful at predicting the shot in order to actually hit that. And so even though she has no damage fall off, the fact that her projectile is so slow still makes her range balanced, and it actually creates a dynamic where if an Eevee is at this range against you, it's honestly impressive to get sniped by her. Like, I don't have a problem if someone hits me at this range with Eevee because I'm like, wow, that was an insanely skillful shot. Especially when you're also trying to, you know, use your own movement abilities at this range. There's a lot of skill involved there, and it's generally a much more balanced weapon. Seven is just hit scan. So not only is it just easier to use at those longer ranges, but it's also easier to use when you're moving around because, well, it's just, it's instant. It's instant damage, right? So you just, <laughs> you just move around and you don't have to really calculate the, uh, the extra sort of triangulation of like, oh, okay, so 
I'm at this position in the sky, my enemy is at that position, but they're moving in that direction, so I have to send my projectile at this distance uh, away from them because it travels at this speed. No, you don't have any of that. You just look at them and you do damage. And so it creates a much less skillful dynamic, but also at longer ranges. It feels so much more oppressive to play against because you still have that, inst uh, that instant damage with that very low damage drop-off, by the way. Take a look at that damage drop-off. I mean, I'm still three-tapping. I'm three-tapping at every range here, right? Get in close. One, two, three taps. It's 150 damage. Go all the way back over here, and okay, well, it drops off to, okay, 144. Wow, whoop de doo <laughs> So, yeah, it's insanely oppressive to play against, and this burst mode honestly should not have this range. This should be nerfed. You cannot have hypermobility in this game and have hyper range in this game as well without balancing it in some way like making it a projectile future hyper mobile champions like seven i'm not against adding i love mobility in this game but they have to have projectiles because hit scans are extremely oppressive i mean you can take a look at basically the only other hyper mobile flank with a hit scan androxus and you can see that well a first of all he has a lot less range right like, we just go here, look at this drop-off, we're doing 277, compared to, at his max range, 550. So his range is significantly weaker. This is not even a competition. Seven is just better. But also, when Androxus was in the top tiers of the meta, right, when he was busted, he was extremely oppressive and unfun to play against as well. Right? You remember around this time last year, Androxus and Seven were both the kings of the flank meta. Even better than Vatu. And they were so frustrating to fight against. Honestly, I would rather fight against a meta Maeve than a meta Androxus any day of the week. I mean, Maeve at least has projectiles, right? She's <laughs> arguably a more skillful character in that regard. And it, it's just, it feels more fair to fight against, right? Because she has all this hypermobility, but, you know, she's limited by the fact that, yeah, she has, you know, these slow projectiles that, you know, <laughs> are a lot harder to hit at range. A hypermobile champion should not have good range. That is just a core design principle of generally shooters in general, right? <laughs> you go, you want to have someone fast? Well, you got to make them use that mobility to get in close. I mean, you can even take a look at maybe like the scout from TF2. He is the fastest class in the game, and he has a shotgun. So this is a design principle that has just been completely uh, just ignored on Seven. One final example we can take a look at is actually Vatu. Vatu and Seven, I would argue, are very similar champions in the sense that they don't have defensive abilities, they have hyper mobility, and they have pretty good burst, right? And Vatu, arguably, if you are a good player, is the better character right now because he has a lot of damage reduction through the power of his cards and his kit and all that type of stuff. But ignoring the damage reduction, just looking at the mobility and the primary fire, Vatu is a lot more balanced in regards to his mobility, because yeah, he has the second best mobility in the game after 7, but take a look at his primary fire. I mean, he has a 3 uh, projectile spread, right? So even at this range, where I'm effectively doing max damage, I'm still only able to hit one kunai, maybe even two, right, if I'm hitting at the right sort of angle here. But I'm not even able to hit all my kunai. And then on top of that, as if that wasn't enough, he also has damage drop-off on these projectiles, so the farther away, away you are, the less damage you do. That is significantly more balanced than what Seven has, and Vatu has to use that hypermobility that he has to get in close, and then when he's in close, I mean, you see the damage. It gets ridiculous, and yeah, it, it's honestly, though, it's a lot more fair than, Vat, uh, than Seven being able to, you know, snipe you from a mile away, because getting in close puts you in more danger. Vatu is able to survive that danger because A, he has really good bursts, and B, he has insane levels of damage reduction on top of that mobility which he uses for dodging. But in general, if you are this close to a target, you are more likely to die than if you're farther away. Most champions in this game have damage falloff, and it's generally easier to hit someone who's closer to you. So, 7 needs to be able to use, or it needs to be forced to, to use, rather, his hypermobility to get in close to do damage. Currently, he does not have to do that. And you could also maybe argue that he should be given the tools to help him survive in that range, like maybe a little bit of extra health or something like that. But the general principle remains of that, yes, he should have to get in close as well. This, right here, is just dumb. It's just dumb.
Now, here's where another key issue of Seven's design comes into effect. That doesn't necessarily relate to him being annoying to play against, but rather to play as, and also makes him annoying in regards to trying to balance this guy. And that is the fact that he has three fire modes, right? And the principle of these fire modes initially was that burst mode would be the best long-ranged option, it would have good poke, but it wouldn't be the ideal option in every circumstance. If you were up close, in your effective range, automatic mode would have higher DPS. Uh, but automatic mode obviously would have worse range. And then if you wanted to really get close and do insane burst, you have mag dump, which is capable of one-tapping if you're able to hit a headshot like that. So, he has basically long, middle, and close range in three separate fire modes. But in practice, this just has never worked. We've had periods in time where Mag Dump was the uh, superior fire mode because it just did insane damage, you could reload spam with it. It was really good, but obviously super close range, and when you weren't in Mag Dump mode, honestly, you would just go to Burst mode, especially because Burst mode is the default mode. It's what you automatically swap to every time you respawn. And ever since Mag Dump has fallen out of the meta, Burst mode has been the only fire mode. You never see people using automatic mode unless they just want to do something different, and when they play automatic mode, guess what? They usually lose. They're usually completely Tactical ineffective genius. because burst mode is just superior. And it does not make sense to have two full fire modes like this, burst mode and automatic mode, that are dedicated to medium-ish range, right? Because burst mode can be used just as effectively in medium range Double as automatic mode, and you honestly don't really lose that much damage with it. If you were to try to make burst mode weaker than automatic mode in mid-range, then it also wouldn't be worth to use in long range, because at long range, I mean, you'd basically probably be doing the same amount as automatic mode would be in long range. And so then what's the point of swapping to burst mode for long range when automatic mode does more damage in mid-range and then is about as effective in long range because the uh, the damage of burst mode is so low. But then conversely, right, if burst mode is strong enough to be the superior option in long range because its damage is that effective, then what's the point of swapping to automatic mode? Because, well, I mean, it's just easier to stay in burst mode all the time. And so having two fire modes for this dynamic just don't make sense, especially when you also consider the fact that there's just damage drop-off in this game. Like, if you want to make Seven effective at a specific range, he has damage fall-off for that. Why not just have one fire mode that just has damage fall-off tuned to where you want him to be? He doesn't need to have crazy long-ranged poke, especially because, duh, he has the best mobility in the game. He can chase anybody. So what I propose, and what I have been proposing for a while now, actually, that I officially want to articulate in this video, is that automatic mode should be removed. Completely remove this mode, and make it so that left click is burst mode. This is his primary fire. This is his gun. Think of it the same as Talus's gun, as Lex's gun, right? That's his primary fire, done and dusted. And then if you right-click, instead Tactical of swapping change. modes to mag dump, you just dump the mag. You literally just dump it. No swapping modes, no delay, just up. instant dump. And what this would do is it would fix the balancing issue of, oh, we have to consider the the fickle balance between burst mode being effective at range but not being good in mid-range and automatic mode being better in mid-range but bad at long range. You wouldn't have to consider that at all. You would just balance burst mode, uh, burst mode as if it were his only weapon, because it is his only weapon. And then mag dump would just be treated more like an ability than anything else. And what this would do for seven players, that would actually honestly probably benefit them a lot, is they wouldn't have to be stuck in one mode all the time. You've seen when mag dump was meta, you would only play mag dump, right? And you would just stay here, you would buy deft hands, and you would just spam, right? Because switching modes takes so long. And switching back and forth, like, let's say I want to switch to mag dump, okay, uh, from burst mode, that's easy, I just one switch done. But now I want to go back to burst mode, now I have to do this, and I basically waste two seconds before I'm finally able to shoot again. It's just frustrating. And getting rid of automatic mode and separating them into, okay, left click is burst mode, right click is mag dump, would completely remove that delay whatsoever, and it would make it feel a lot better to play as, I think. And it would make it so that if you wanted to play a dedicated mag dump playstyle, you still could. You would just right-click spam instead of left-click spam, but if you needed to use that long-ranged poke, you would easily be able to transfer into that option. Or, if you didn't want to play a dedicated mag dump spam build, but you still wanted to mag dump, oh, I'm really close to this Vic, but I'm in burst mode, guess what? Just right-click, bam, there's 2,000 damage. 
<laughs> it would make it so much more convenient to play 7. But then because you only had burst mode to consider in terms of balancing his primary fire, you could then as Evil Mojo be like, "Okay, we want to turn uh, we want to tune burst mode to have, I don't know, let's say a fall off range equivalent to maybe binary star Genos or Koga or Lex or Talus or however you however low you want to make it." And you wouldn't have to consider about, oh, the the, fi the the fickle balance between burst and automatic mode. It just wouldn't exist. And so I think that is a very elegant solution that would benefit 7 players and would also make it easier to balance 7 and would benefit players who are frustrated by playing against 7 because you'd only have burst mode to consider for balance and you'd be able to very easily nerf the range from there. And for those of you who are saying, hold on, wait a minute, I like automatic mode. Why are you removing that one and not removing burst mode? Isn't burst mode the problem? I mean, come on, man. Well, here's the thing. We have too many automatic mode champions in this game. Let's be real. This gun right here is basically a clone of Victor, Tyra, Vivian, Talus, Genos, etc. Just with slightly tweaked fire rate and damage numbers. It's not unique. Burst mode, on the other hand, is unique. There aren't nearly as many champions with a burst fire in this game. We have Ying, we have burst mode Vic, I'm probably forgetting like one or two, maybe, but the list is far shorter. And so, from the standpoint of keeping Seven's identity, keeping him unique, Burst Mode is the logical primary fire mode that should be kept in place of Automatic Mode, right? Burst Mode should be kept, Automatic Mode should go. Plus, statistically, I'm sure you'll find far more people use Burst Mode than they do Automatic Mode. <laughs> maybe that's because Burst Mode is meta, maybe it's because of what people prefer. Either way, it is the more popular mode, and so it'd be easier to transition into this rework 7 if Burst Mode were the primary fire and not Automatic Mode. One final note for Burst Mode is just a bug fix. Burst Mode, pretty much since his release, has been bugged to where, count the procs of damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? It basically shoots in pairs of two, right? You have two procs, two procs, two procs. So that's six procs of damage, but it only consumes three ammo, right? Six procs, three ammo. Six procs, three ammo. So how about we fix the ammo efficiency of burst mode and make it consume six bullets like it should? Obviously, making it only shoot three bullets would drastically nerf its damage. <laughs> Considering the fire rate, that would not be a good idea. So just fix the ammo economy of this. Because honestly, he has really good ammo efficiency. I mean, look at this. We're able to kill three people and have four bullets left over before we finally have to reload. The fixing that wouldn't hurt him that much, and it's just it's a small thing that would just make sense. Anyways, now I want to move into some changes for his mobility. And I'm going to try and keep these somewhat sensible. Because I want to keep Seven's uh, identity, as I said at the start, of being a very hypermobile flank and having the best mobility in the game, right? Because that is his identity, and if he had worse range, then it only makes sense that he should have good mobility so that he can get in close and do damage, right? It's the concept we've talked about with Maeve, Eevee, Vatu, etc. So what would I do to his mobility? Well, at base kit, there's nothing I would change, right? That's not really a problem. His base mobility without cards is, it's fine. Nothing wrong there. But here's one thing we can do immediately, right off the bat, that would actually be a buff, I think, more so than it would be a nerf. You see this? Get rid of this. 200 damage for a 14 second cooldown, and I don't go anywhere? Are you kidding me, hi -Rez? In this day and age, this should not be a thing. It made sense on release because this came with crowd control. You were able to grab somebody towards you, so instead of using it for mobility, you used it for crowd control. But ever since they removed the crowd control portion, there's no reason to use this offensively. And if you do happen to accidentally target somebody with this, you go nowhere and you basically die because you've used your movement ability at that point and went nowhere. That should be removed, and that would honestly be a buff for Seven. <laughs> just a straight up buff, because you wouldn't accidentally use it for damage anymore. Nobody uses it intentionally for damage, except in the most niche of circumstances. Like, you're out of ammo and they're extremely low. But that's such a niche circumstance. It would be a buff to remove that, right? So let's, let's remove that, first and foremost. But now, let's go ahead and talk about the cards. Because the cards are really the source of Seven's hypermobility if you really want to push him to the limits and be traveling across the map in mere seconds. 
So the obvious candidate to talk about first as the source of many frustrations for myself and others is Terror 5. This card is freakishly good, but also kind of weird, right? This card increases the pull strength of your grappling hook, so you're able to go significantly farther than you would normally. I mean, if we just go ahead and grab a build that doesn't have this in it, you'll see the difference. If I even have one. Okay, I have I have this one, yeah. Look at that difference. We, I mean, we barely go anywhere. And then with Terra 5, go ahead and put that back in our build. Go ahead and get reset. I should buy Chronos for this. <laughs> oh my god, we go so much farther. Terror 5 is an extreme source of power for 7, especially on open maps like Jag Falls, Bright Marsh, uh, Serpent Beach, Timber Mill, etc. And it just, it's ridiculous, honestly. The amount of despair I've felt <laughs> as a 7 main with Terror 5 runs away from me. And there's nothing I can do to chase them because they are literally on the other side of the map with one ability is just absurd. Or, conversely, right, you don't even need a horse if you have Terror 5 because you just dismount instantly from spawn and then just do this and you're at the point. And so this card is just, it's, it's silly. If we were to nerf it, just flat nerf the value, right? You can nerf it maybe from 25% to something like 20% or maybe even... Oh, I don't know, 15%? You could do that, right? And that would make the card a bit more balanced at level 5. It would take some of the fun away from 7 players, admittedly, but I think it's still very fun to have a lower level of terror and zip around the map. So, that could be something you do, but I'm not necessarily sure that's the solution. Because terror... I mean, having it at a, a level that's too high, honestly, is a, a bit of sabotage on some maps to yourself, where you go so fast that you accidentally collide with a wall, you can't control your movements, and it gets you stuck. So there is that to consider as well. But also, with Overcharged, Terror doesn't work. Y you would think that increasing the pull strength of the grapple by 25% would also affect the crowd control, but it doesn't. And so it's a bit misleading, and it ends up actually not being as great of a card as you might think with this playstyle, if you are going to use it for the crowd control. But we'll talk more about Overcharged later. So what you might do instead, and this might be a, a bit of a controversial idea, is remove Terror entirely. Maybe put a weaker version of it into base kit, like, I don't know, just permanently increase the grapple strength by 10% at base, or, or something like that. And then replace it with a different card, entirely, to what Seven has in his arsenal, right? He can heal after hitting somebody, which that card would have to be reworked too if we were to remove the stupid <laughs> hitting people with grappling hook thing. Uh, you could just make that heal after using grappling hook, bam, easy. Uh, we have My City, which reduces damage reduction, or uh, reduces your damage taken by 10% after latching to the wall. And then we have reduced the cooldown of explosive dodge after activating Grappling Hook. So you could potentially change Terror into something else entirely, like a shield after Grappling Hook, or damage reduction after Grappling Hook. You know, kind of taking inspiration from Vora, who's a far more balanced champion. <laughs> you could do that, and that might be a way to fix Terror, is just don't worry about nerfing Terror at all. Rework it completely, put a weaker version in base kit, and now you don't have to worry about varying levels of, oh, this 7 has no terror, he's balanced. This 7 has terror 5, he's traveling across the map with two grapples. You wouldn't have that dynamic anymore. So that could be something you do with terror, or, I mean, just flat nerf it by 5%. Either way, this card is too strong at level 5, and while it is extraordinarily fun to play as, I will admit, I do enjoy playing with this card, you also have to admit that it is ridiculous. It's just flat out ridiculous. Anyways, next up, we do have these two other cards, The Knight and Latch and Fire. And these cards honestly were a lot stronger in the past, right? If we rewind to a year ago, these cards A, scaled higher, but B, also were just a lot more prominent because seven in general was stronger and you also saw spring loaded used a lot and spring loaded has stronger bombs you just had so much more power from these cards nowadays i don't think these are as much of an issue right because let's say i'm using tribunal upgrades let's say i don't want to use terror uh i need to make a build for that actually i already have a build for that what am i saying i have this build which only has terror at level three so a bit more balanced right these cards at level five 
without Kronos. So let me also <laughs> Barrack da, 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 and seven. There we go. These cards aren't that crazy without Kronos, right? We grapple and then we roll and then we grapple and then we roll and then we grapple and then we roll and then we grapple and then we roll and Kronos obviously makes that a lot stronger right but you also are sacrificing Haven on a character who only has 1900 health so there is that to consider as well and also by using both of those cards at level 5 you're also sacrificing the health card or any other cards that you may want to use you could maybe say that these cards should have internal cooldowns like maybe a three second internal cooldown or something like that that is a possibility you know give him the imani treatment because you know imani got internal cooldowns you know the the s tier champion that is imani right <laughs> you, you could do that but i think if terror were to be nerfed or reworked or you know, the, the previous changes that I just said were to be implemented. I don't think you would need to do that to these cards. And also, keep in mind that if we go back even further and implement the range nerfs and the whole weapon shenaniganry that I suggested at the start, I don't think you'd need to nerf these cards at all. Because at that point, you'd have much more balanced range and you'd be able to get in a lot... You'd be forced to get in a lot more often in order to do your damage. And so these cards would honestly be really important. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't necessarily think these cards need as much of a nerf, if a nerf at all, if some of the other changes I have suggested were to be implemented. So I don't think I'd actually touch these. Now, what other changes would I do to 7? Auxiliary changes that don't really have much to do with any of the main gimmicks that I've just suggested. Well, a buff I would give to 7 would be... If you're latched to a wall like this, in his current state, if you get shot by any blaster, Eevee, Ash, Drogos, etc., you will be knocked off the wall. Minor knockbacks like these, knockbacks that are just so tiny they don't mean anything, those will knock you off the wall, and that should not be the case. Only major knockbacks, proper knockback abilities like Disengage, Kinetic Burst, etc., only those should knock you off the wall. You should be knocked. You should not be knocked off, off by a single Drogo's rocket coming your way. That would just be silly. That, that, that is silly. So that's actually a buff I would give to Seven because that's just dumb. <laughs> and it would significantly buff the whole Spider-Man play style of, oh, let's latch to the wall like a sneaky boy and shoot them from the sky. Ha <laughs> ha. Of course, with the nerfed range, you probably wouldn't be able to do that anyways, but the point still stands that if you want to latch to the wall, you shouldn't be knocked off by a mere bomb like that. The other buff I would give to Seven is obviously to Overcharged. This is one of the worst talents in the game, and Overcharged right now effectively turns you into just a terrible version of Cassie, right? Because at this point, if you want to use your grapple for crowd control, right, you have Reverse Disengage. And then you do nothing, right? You, you shoot, you have your dodge roll, and then you, you, you continue so to just shoot, right? Your backline DPS, with just a mere 1900 HP, you've basically lost all your mobility. Unless, of course, you want to use your grapple for mobility, in which case you don't have a disengage anymore, right? You, you don't have that knockback anymore. And so this talent is just... It was a major overreaction to the calls for the knockback to be removed from this grapple, right? The pull to be removed. Because the pull should have been removed from base kit, but this talent went too far with saying, oh, we're going to keep it, but we're going to nerf you so hard that you're basically never going to be able to use it. This talent, straight up, should have the cooldown buff removed, right? Remove this part, you know, reduce its cooldown by two seconds. And it should have its second charge of grapple back. Now, you might be saying, whoa, hold on, hold on, Andrew. Don't you remember what that was like? Yeah, I remember what that was like. And part of why it was so strong was, A, well, Seven's gotten, a plenty, Seven's gotten plenty of nerfs since Overcharged was implemented, right? He got his burst mode nerfed in terms of the range, in terms of the damage. He's gotten his bombs nerfed in terms of the damage, the knockback. He's gotten a lot of nerfs since then. And those would not be coming back. And also... With the knockback in base kit, what it allowed you to do was pick spring loaded or pick tribunal upgrades and still have that crowd control. The trade off of picking overcharged for that crowd control, if you were to have two grapples, 
would be that you don't get the bonus damage of Tribunal Upgrades, and you don't get the bonus mobility and damage of Spring Loot. So, you'd still have a trade-off with this talent, right? This talent gives you a trade-off in terms of, oh, you don't get to pick these other two talents, and you also have one less grapple. That's too much. Give the second grapple back, remove this cooldown buff, and you still have the trade-off of, okay, I have this crowd control now, but guess what? I can't put down a second set of bombs, my roll is a, lo a lot weaker, and I don't have bonus damage on my burst mode. So it's a lot harder to kill things. That would be good enough. Overcharged is literally a throw pick right now. It is a bottom tier talent. You don't get much worse than Overcharged. You have to start looking at Oppression Knessa and the entirety of Kasumi's kit in order to find things that are worse than this talent. That's how bad it is. Deep Roots is, is probably worse than this talent, but not by much. It's terrible. And so a buff of that magnitude is necessary to make it good again. Well, good again. It was never good, but you get the point. So that would be another buff I would give to Seven. It's not all nerfs that I would do to Seven, uh, contrary to what some might think, seven. you know, because I hate Seven. <laughs> so yeah, that's just about everything I would do to Seven, the most controversial flank in Paladins. And I'm sure some of my takes were controversial as well. I can't wait to see the dislike ratio on this video. Oh boy. <laughs> uh, but yeah, to sum things up with what I would do to Seven, well, first of all, I would nerf the range of burst mode drastically because his range is too good. He has the best mobility in the game. He should be forced to use that mobility to get in close. I would completely remove automatic mode and make it so that if you left click, you do burst mode. If you right click, you instantly dump the mag without having to switch stances at all. Drop the switch stance entirely. Honestly, it would feel a lot better for seven players and it would allow evil mojo to have an easier time balancing this champion in terms of the damage and range of his burst mode. I would also fix the ammo consumption so that he probably Properly consumes six ammo instead of just three when he shoots six bullets right that that is a bit silly and then in terms of his mobility i would make it so that you can no longer grapple to enemies for just 200 damage and absolutely nothing else remove that entirely and i would also slightly nerf terror or rework it entirely and put a weaker version of it in base kit and that reworked card would give him a bit more survivability in terms of either damage reduction or a shield so ultimately, he would have a bit more survivability for when he does get in close quarters because of that nerfed range. He would still have really good mobility, but it wouldn't be slightly as crazy as it is with Terra 5 right now. I'd leave Latch and Fire and the Knight basically untouched because, again, his range would be a lot weaker. Those cards would become a lot more important. I would make it so that when you grapple to a wall like this, you don't get knocked off by a mere bomb, by a Drogo's rocket, or by an Eevee blast, or anything like that. And I would also buff Overcharged by giving it two charges of his grapple back and removing the cooldown buff that it gives, so that way it can finally become a somewhat decent talent. <laughs> you would still have the trade-off of not being able to pick Spring Loaded or Tribunal Upgrades and get the benefit of that crowd control, but it would be a lot stronger than it currently is. And what that would leave us with is a flank that still has the best mobility in all of Paladins, just slightly barely not as good as it used to be and he would have significantly reduced range so he'd actually have to use that mobility to get in close but he'd have slightly better survivability in close range if you were to build him properly and ultimately i think that would make him feel a lot more fair to fight against and also try and still keep him fun to play as, right? You'd still have the absolute thrill of flying across the map at Mach 10, dropping bombs on people and blasting them for high burst, right? We're not talking about nerfing the damage numbers here, just the range. And you'd still be able to Cerebral activate terror Cerebral Terror Mode and fear them all and kill them all, oh my god! And you'd even have the added convenience of not worrying about your grapple, accidentally targeting an enemy, or having to switch stances in order to use Magda. He'd become a lot more convenient with those changes. But yeah, you would have to get in close now. That is the big trade-off. So yeah, let me know what you think in the comments section down below, especially if you're a seven main. I, I especially want to hear from the seven mains on this because it is seven after all. You guys know more about seven than I do. And yeah, also make sure if you enjoyed this video to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that wonderful stuff. And yeah, with all that being said, thank you guys for watching. I will see you all next time. Peace out.